How's it going? My name is Cameron, also known as Venus Theory, and in this video, I'm really excited to show you guys the brand new PSP Oldtimer MB. So, Oldtimer MB is a multiband dynamics processor based on the Oldtimer compressor, which is one of my favorite PSP compressors. It has this really cool kind of spongy character to it, so this gives you three bands of that same spongy character. Oldtimer MB is also more than just a multiband compressor because it offers you an enhanced set of controls that allow you to do a lot of different things like independently process the left and right channels or the mid and side channels. You can also control the stereo imaging with the width controls. There's also a really nice valve circuit emulation that allows you to dial in a bit more color and character to your sounds and an order filter which allows you to control the crossover between bands for a bit of different color and character to multiband compression. So let's hop in the DAW here and take a look at Oldtimer MB and break down a couple uses for it. Alright, so here we are in the DAW with Oldtimer MB open. So I first wanted to break down the interface for you guys and show you what everything does, and then I wanted to show you how I used only Oldtimer MB to mix this track. So there's no EQ, no nothing like that, just a few instances of Oldtimer MB. So this is the plugin itself, so as you can see we have three separate bands here, and then over to the left we have our crossover controls, and down in the bottom we have the global or overall controls. So one of the first things I want to point out is if you need to resize the plugin, like maybe you're on a really high resolution display or you have this installed on multiple machines where one might have a smaller screen, you can go up here to the top left and click this 100% value and then use the minus or plus to decrease or increase the size of the plugin. So here you can see all three of these bands actually have the same controls, so we can just break down one strip and then you'll know the whole plugin. So here we have attack and release, which control attack and release. Then over here we have the release settings, so if you have it on off, this is just a standard release that you can control with the release knob. Auto 1, which is the legacy automatic release from the original old timer, and Auto 2, which is a new analog modeled automatic release. The release knob in the cases of the Auto 1 and Auto 2 modes actually adjusts the ideal release time, however it will be automatically adjusted based on the input signal. Next up is the ratio, which controls the ratio of compression all the way down to 1.1 to 1 up to 10 to 1. So you can almost use this as a multiband limiter in a way, which is pretty nice. And the 1 to 1 is a really nice setting as well because it allows you to kind of pass through things and just get a bit of color and character due to the valve circuit emulation. In the center here we have our VU meter which is showing the amount of gain reduction being applied. This can be controlled with the compression knob here which controls the amount of compression being applied. Then we have gain which allows you to compensate for that compression. You can go all the way down to minus infinity or up to plus 12 dB. Next up is one of my favorite features about this plugin here which is this width knob right here. So what this does is it allows us to turn it down towards M to make that band mono or go up to S which enhances the side signal of that band. So this is a great way to add a bit of stereo enhancement to things like a drum bus or your mix bus. Finally, over to the right here, we could solo the band, mute the band, or we could go ahead and turn the effect on or off by bypassing it. You can also completely disable the band with the off option here. So if you just wanted to use this as a single compressor, you can actually just turn off the high and the low bands, and then you just get one band of compression which is being applied to the entire spectrum. So down here on the bottom we have the sidechain high pass filter and the sidechain link controls, the mode which is actually pretty cool. So we have stereo here or you can use left and right. So what you would do is have two instances of old timer MB, one applied to the left and one applied to the right side. You can also do mid and side with the M and S here. In the center we have the master on and bypass switch. Then down here we have this link button. So what you could do is actually click this and then move controls and it will move all the related controls in relationship to each other. So if I had this on maybe 1.5 to 1 and hit link, you could see the low and higher on 4 to 1 and it moves these all in relation to each other which is pretty handy. If you don't have that enabled and you want to use that function you can actually just hold control or command and it will automatically do that and release it. Over here we have the blend which allows us to go from dry to wet, CMP meaning compressed or wet. So this allows you to apply the entire effect in parallel which is great for group processing. One global output gain control so you can compensate for the effect. Balance towards left, right or center. And then over here we have the valve processing. So this is really nice valve circuit emulation that can add a lot of color and character. So what you could do is just adjust the amount of that here. Otherwise if you don't want that at all you could just switch this down to off. So let's talk about these over here on the left hand side. These are the crossover controls. So what this is doing is controlling the crossover point between the mid and high band and the low and mid band. And then we have this order right here. So order is actually controlling the slope or relationship between the crossover points of the different bands. So this is definitely something to mess with. I almost think of this as kind of a second color control. So what this is actually doing is first is going to be the most gentle slope which kind of lets the bands bleed together a bit more and almost sounds like one compressor. Second is a bit more of an all around setting which has a bit steeper and more distinctive relationship between the bands. And fourth is the steepest which allows you to get very direct processing on a per band basis which is really nice. So this isn't the most apparent thing in the world but when you have very broad spectrum content like a drum bus or 
the entire mix or something like that, this is a bit more apparent. So I've got this drum uh, mix soloed here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch the order from first to second to fourth and you can hear the difference. So it's subtle, but you can hear the difference, especially from first to fourth here, if I do that really quick. Things just feel a bit sharper and a bit more separated. So we get a more clear distinction of the kick and the high end being compressed, and then that snare gets a bit more whack to it in that center band. So that's the plugin itself, and those are all the controls. It's very straightforward and easy to use. So I've got this set up across this mix here. You can see I've got Old Timer MB on a couple different things. This is the drum group. I've got it on the kick and snare, the overheads, the room over here on the piano. I've got it on the acoustic guitar group, the bass guitar, the electric guitar is here. And then finally, I also have it over here on the master bus. So I'm going to go ahead and play you this mix without anything happening. The only thing you're going to hear is this PSP Xenon, which isn't really doing much. I'm mostly just using this to lift the level a bit because it's relatively quiet. So I'm going to go ahead and play this mix here and let you listen to the unaffected mix. Then we're going to turn on Old Timer MB and listen to that. And then I'll break down what I did and what I used it for. Okay, so that is the mix with no effects applied whatsoever. Let's go ahead and enable all of the instances of Old Timer MB here and then take a listen to the final product. So that is the completed mix, which I think sounds really, really good. And it's impressive that Old Timer MB is able to control the entire mix, but also add just a bit of character and almost kind of that warmth to it, which is what I really like about the original Old Timer. It has this kind of very specific spongy sound to it that just kind of grabs things in a very nice way. So having access to this in three separate bands allows you a lot more control and power to this plugin overall. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I did with each instance of Old Timer here. So first and foremost, I think the drums are the thing to talk about here. So let's go and solo that out and first talk about the kick drum. So I've got old timer MB here. I'm going to disable this on the group. And all I'm doing is trying to enhance a little bit of low end thunk. If I disable the effect, you can hear it's just kind of a pretty plain kick drum. But with this, I'm just squeezing the high and middle bands and letting a bit more of the low through and then adjusting the compression mostly going for about two to five dB of gain reduction here. And that really helps bring up just a little bit of that low end energy. But the valve circuit emulation here is really where the magic is happening. If I disable that, put it back on, you hear it just kind of smudges the transient in a really nice way, which is something to experiment with. So after that, we've got the snare here. And similarly, I'm not doing all that much to it. It's pretty straightforward, just two to one mostly just upping the attack time to let more of the transient through so it's a bit more punchy. So without the effect, 
and with it. So it really enhances that mid smack. And that was really all I did for this snare. So next up, I've got it here on the overheads and the room, which I think are probably the most important things when mixing drums. So I'm gonna go ahead and bypass this. So this is on the overheads. And with the effect on. So what I'm doing here is letting through as much of that cymbal transient as I can to get those nice kind of clicky rides. Over here I've got the width up and then I'm just dropping it down ever so slightly on the mid and low bands. So this way I'm just enhancing that top end. I'm not really messing with the crossover points, although we can maybe make this a bit tighter by going up more towards about 6K. And then other than that, just kind of squeezing things just a tiny bit in the mid and low bands. But the highs, I'm really squishing those down to get those nice big airy cymbals. So the room here is a bit more aggressive overall. This is without the effect. With it. We can maybe even go a bit further. Get a bit more of a almost crunchy lo-fi effect. So one of the other things we could do here is actually just get this all down to mono. And this way we can get a more punchy, aggressive room mic in the mix. So I'm gonna go ahead and just, let's put these all towards uh, the center here. So this is just gonna be regular old stereo and take a listen to the difference this makes on the drum mix. So that would be a very wide room. And that's totally mono. So you can hear the mono is just a bit more aggressive and drives the drums right down the middle. So we can maybe just up this a little bit here and get some of that mono punch but retain that nice wide roomy stereo feel. Finally, I've got Old Timer here on the drum group and this is just doing some classic kind of parallel compression. You can see I've blended it in here. Um, four to one on everything, mostly letting the mid and low through on the attack settings. That way we're getting a nice bit of transient and thump from the kick and snare. The high band is pretty quick here, just grabbing that down just to get those nice airy cymbals. Enhancing the top end a bit, not really doing much to the rest. We can maybe drop this width here on the low band and maybe go down towards maybe about 170. And that's without it. So it really, really brings that drum mix to life. So let's move on to some of the other instruments in the mix. So this is the piano here, and this was a bit problematic in the mix. Let's go ahead and bypass the effect. And turn it on. So what I mostly wanted to do here was get a bit more of that initial attack through and get that kind of almost finger hit if that makes sense and then wanted to get rid of some of that mud so we could actually probably go ahead and drop the gain on the low band a bit just to use this almost as an EQ as well. Maybe a lot a bit more attack through. And then we could use the width controls. And that gives us a really nice piano sound that's very controlled. We could also use the valve control here just to maybe add a bit more color. But you can see it's not lighting up all that much. This is gonna go from green to red with red being the most saturation being applied. So this is a bit more subtle in this case, but the valve control just, again, makes a bit of a difference more in the broad scope of things unless you're really overdriving it. It's just a nice way to add a little bit of character and once it's applied across several things in a mix, it really starts to add up. So now we've got the acoustic guitars here. Not too much to talk about on this setting. 
Most of what I'm doing is just squeezing things together, a nice four to one setting, pretty quick attack. We can maybe open it up a bit on the mid band here and that way we get a bit more of that transient through, but mostly using the width controls. And that way we're getting that nice, big, open acoustic guitar mix. Valve processing, once again, I uh, just really like the way this sounds. We might play with the order a bit here since the acoustic guitar is a fairly broad spectrum sound. So I think I actually like fourth there just for a bit more, I don't know, click it seems to add. So after that, I've got the bass here. This isn't doing all that much. This is just a pretty standard bass setting going for about six ish dB of gain reduction is what I aim for. But this way, what I like about old timer MB, you know, even though I'm doing pretty much the same processing across all the bands, is I'm not squishing the high end as much. So I'm really only controlling kind of the tubby, flubby low end of the bass, which you'll hear is a bit out of control if I bypass the effect. So that like 150 to 200 hertz region, probably a bit overpowering, but once we turn this on, we get a much more rounded bass because we're not having that overwhelming low end. And the valve here you'll see is going more towards yellow, so we're getting a bit more character processing. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off and then turn it on. You could see if you could hear the difference this makes. So there, especially on the low end, I think it's a bit more apparent. It really adds this nice kind of depth to things. And I think this is where this really shines, especially on the masters. That little bit of valve processing just adds kind of that bigger, more open feel to a mix. I'm not sure how to describe it, but yeah, it's great little control. So finally, uh, the electric guitars here, not really doing much. The only thing I really wanted more on the electric guitars was just a bit more of that kind of pick hit action. So this is mostly gonna come from the mid and high bands. If we solo these out here, bypass them. So this just kind of flattens things out, but it gives me a bit more of that pick energy, which is really nice. So let's go ahead and unsolo this and we could bypass the whole effect. Maybe turn up that valve. And we can maybe overdrive it a bit. Which gives us a really nice big open feel to this mix. So finally, the master bus here, this guy is just doing a little bit of stuff, not really too much. I'm mostly going for more glue compression than I am like actual hardcore compression. So if we bypass this here, and here we go. Just adds a bit more punch overall. And then I'm using the width control here, mostly on the top end, just to give that a bit more bias towards the sides, which just makes it a bit more open and airy. And then we might tighten up the low band here by just dropping the width slightly. We don't want to do too much on the master bus, but you know, just a little bit can add some nice control overall to the stereo image. So we can go ahead and maybe up the valve processing just a bit. which adds a really nice feel overall. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you just the final uh, result here. So we'll go ahead and do this one more time. I'm gonna disable all the instances of old timer and then I'm gonna turn them on as well as these two extra plugins here on the master bus. So I've got vintage warmer two, uh, just ducking out a tiny bit of unnecessary low end, a little bit of drive and mostly aiming for about one dB of reduction here. 
and then master Q, which is the mastering EQ. I'm cutting out some sub, boosting a little bit of about 60, cutting out some mud here around 150-ish, boosting 1K for some energy, and then adding a bit of an airlift here, mostly above about 7.5K. So that's all I'm doing there, and then finally that feeds into Xenon, which again isn't really doing all that much, I'm mostly just using this to lift the overall level. So let's go ahead and bypass everything and take one more AB listen to the completed mix using only Old Timer MB. Let's take a listen to the final product with Old Timer MB and those master effects. And that is the final result, which I think sounds really, really excellent. And again, it just adds this nice bit of depth and character to a mix overall. So it's a really great way to enhance things and not only use it as a compressor, but also just as a bit of a character thing that just, you know, adds a little bit of color and a little bit of flavor to your stuff that you put it on. So really, really nice stuff. And that's it for this video. So thanks for watching. And to check out Old Timer MB for yourself or get more information, you can head over to PSPAudioWare.com.